good morning everybody had a few uh, issues there trying to get live I hope you're all healthy and well on this beautiful sunny morning um, I'm just waiting for some people just to come in I know quite a few people are actually working some of the key workers this morning so I'll send you the link through YouTube and um, you can also watch it later through Facebook and through our website as well um, as we said on Monday, we're going to be talking about immune boosting uh, lunches um, and one of the questions that I was asked um, later on after the session was about children's tummies as well. So I am going to be discussing that as well. But also for children's tummies, it can be a little bit like adults tummies, you know, if you haven't got a massive appetite and you just want a small lunch, light lunch, these are really good recipes to, to have alongside that. So just seeing if people can say that they're, they're with me right now, put a comment on there, that'd be fantastic. Hello Harps, how you doing? You got up this morning? Hello Dawn, morning Yvette. Either of you three got any questions that you wanna ask me today in regards to immune boosting uh, lunches at all? I mean, I bet you should have lots of choice in, in your area you're in Spain, so this is going to suit you really well with what I'm going to be discussing today. Harps, have you started weaning yet? You want to reply back to me so I can help you with your little one? got a little bit of a delay going on so just bear with us a second hello Gareth lovely to see you have you been up since five this morning doing a workout <laughs> I know I've been up early I've had a lot to do this morning Right guys, I'm going to get started. Like I say, I know there's quite a few people that are going to be missing this morning. So, let's talk about immune boosted lunches. So, first of all, you start thinking about the sunshine out there. So, what foods do you crave at this time of year? Well, the Mediterranean diet is one of the best diets in the world. It gives you all the vitamins and minerals that you need. And a lot of stuff is available in your local you know, corner shop to your farm, to your supermarket. So if you think Mediterranean, what do you think of? My first thought comes to my most favorite, favorite power food, and that's the good old olives. Now, I know for some people, you it's a bit like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. My, um, olives are something that are my, my go-to, especially in the clinic, no matter what season they are, it's literally, I will grab those to keep me going throughout the day, because they're easy to eat and nibble on. But you can use olives in lots of different ways. It doesn't need to be just eating them as they are. You can actually use them as a spread um, instead of using butter. So what you do is you mash them down and you get all different types of versions of olives. So you get green, black, and so on. And then you can have ones with chili, almonds. All of them are great, okay? It depends on preference taste. I mean, if you have the ones with almonds, you're even boosting even more of your vitamins and minerals there as well, and sustain you with glucose index. Now, for guys that don't know what glucose index is, we have high and low glucose index, and high glucose index foods are things like white pasta, um, white rice. They go into the bloodstream really, really, really quickly, which means, yeah, you feel okay at the time, but then you have a sugar dip, and you can feel quite bloated afterwards. So. The glucose dip goes down really, really quickly. What we want in our diets is slow releasing glucose index food. And olives are one of those things. And especially if you use it instead of butter and you mash it up, um, you can put a little bit, tiny little bit of olive oil with it. Or as I prefer it, I just like to crush them down, put some, um, put a little bit of lime, um, my go-to with a lot of foods, um, lime and some cracked black pepper. And then you can have that, I've got a message come through so I will uh, answer that one in a minute um, is that you can mash that down and if you've got any crackers in the house you know there's crackers that have not been used up or pochetta some so, so some um, bread that's going a little bit stale and um, sprinkle some olive oil on it put it in the oven just for a few minutes it 
really depends on whether you have gas or electric how long it takes so just be aware um i do I find i don't get along very well with with electric because i burn everything so that's why i've got gas at home um and then basically then when you take it out you then put the um olive oil um sorry the the uh, olive um butter on the top and then get some beefy beefy um tomatoes cut them up slice them on the top and then get some rocket as well it's absolutely delicious and then what you can also add if you want to it's down to preference or choice um i have flaxseed oil absolutely every every day it really helps with your skin it helps with your immune system and you can add in there a little bit of honey as well so you're getting a real boost and you don't need a lot to fill you up so what looks a very small portion actually will sustain you for a long period of time it'll last you two to three to four hours sometimes um so it's something to think about the other thing um that you can have as well is basically sweet potatoes now sweet potatoes are so easy to cook you don't need to cook them in the oven and um, you don't need to cook them or steam them either so you can just put them if you i mean if you don't like microwaves you don't have to do this if you're auntie hello sheena how you doing <clears throat> Um, you can just put them in the in the microwave for about five minutes. They soften up really, really, really quickly, and then you cut them open and then mash them up. Okay, um, and sweet potatoes have many antioxidants in there. They also lower your cholesterol. They're real. Sheena, you'll love this one. Um, weight loss, massive weight loss. But you only to have one. Okay, you don't need to have the whole bag of them. Um, it also can help with fight uh, cancer properties as well, which a lot of people don't realise that. So when I have um, cancer patients that come into the clinic, um, it's one of the things that I put on their programme to help them. And also when people go on a, a, a detox programme um, at this time of year and then going into the uh, months of October, November, um, have twice a week remember a variety and diet is a real key point that you don't become food intolerant if you're having the same foods over and over again and this is not to concern people so don't freak out you know i've been there i've got three three children as you all know uh, and new listeners if you don't you do know now is trying to get variety in your kids diet they go through different times of their life where they won't eat anything or they'll eat the same thing over and over again try and test different foods with them get them involved get them to taste it even if it's a couple of couple of you know teaspoons of that food because it takes a while for their their taste buds to to get used to the the, the consistency it might be down to the consistency the texture the taste it can be a matter of different things and make sure that they're chewing it properly so you know i know for instance uh Biana, he was one of the best uh little ones for eating then he went through a stage where he he was mr white man so what i mean by that he just wanted processed foods he wanted white pitters white nans white pasta and it was really really hard to get that out of him and then we got him he got him watching cookery programs of all things he um he loves hello rachel from new zealand and hello katie um he loves gordon ramsay um I know he swears a lot, but the ones that he watches is with Tilly Ramsey, his his daughter, um, and that really got him interested in in food. And now he wants to be a chef, so his taste buds are completely changed from one extreme to another. So that does happen. So just bear with your children, okay? Um, with that sweet potato, you can have pepper tuna. So you can get pepper tuna steaks, um, and for for the guys that need to have high protein diets and um having a combination of fiber alongside the protein is really important for it to break down so it breaks down to the antioxidants and it also breaks down the fish as well so if you don't like a tuna steak you can have a tin of tuna but make sure it's in the uh in in the waters if you're worried about weight control um make sure you don't have it with the oils okay um i don't know for you about it, that you might struggle to get tuna with just water and brine i don't know if it's just oil out there if you can let me know, um, I can source and have a look what other things I've got available out there. And you can do that with salmon as well. Then basically, whether it's a steak or it's uh, from a tuna from a tin, then basically get loads of cracked black pepper, 
it can be white it depends on how peppery you like it so i like really peppery foods it can be white coarse um pepper black coarse pepper mixed together put a bit a little bit of um lemon on there so again you're breaking down the enzymes and then mash it on the top hello phil hope you're watching and taking in i'm going to be look, talking about little belly soon as well and um, and then put that on the top of the jacket potato and then have a mixed salad along there. And when I say mixed salad, have a big portion there. I call them my free foods. So the more greens you have on there, the better. So things like rocket, mixed, uh, mixed leaf, um, you can have some Japanese lettuce on there. So the ones that you, you are a bit unfamiliar with, give them a go. The ones that look quite ugly looking are normally the ones that are actually really, really good for you. They are quite bitter in taste because they hold a lot of chlorophyll, which is great for the skin, great for the digestion. So what you need to do then is if you're struggling with the taste, put, make your own mignorette on the top or put some olive oil over the top. If you're worried about weight again, you can use lemon or lime drizzled over the top and that's one meal in itself. And that again will keep you going low glucose index. So for the people that have just come in, low glucose index is really important. So it's slowly releasing into your body. So you don't get those sugar cravings for having something sweet after the meal. It also helps with your vision. It helps with brain function um, and simply supports your immune system. Um, the next thing is tomatoes, beef tomatoes and mozzarella salad. Uh, we're topped with salt and olive oil. So this would be really easy for a vet. Um, a vet, you don't have to have the uh, mozzarella. You can choose something else that you want with that. So you could have some fish, okay? I know that you like your fish and so on out there. Um, so tomatoes are high in fiber. Um, they're also a good source of A, C, B and 2. Hello, Claire. Um, and basically they've also got hot basically the benefits of virgin oil as well topped with basil leaves so literally cut your beef tomatoes up i like to put them on a plate separately um i know phil you're a massive cook so you you'll like some of the recipes that i'm saying season them with the olive oil over the top put the sea salt on and just let them sit there for a few minutes okay um and then basically chop your mozzarella up if it's you a vet or you want fish um, some trout or tuna or salmon or mackerel is really 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 great it's great for the hormones as well so for us ladies that are going through the menopause that i know there's a few people on there including myself um, fish is a really important part of my diet um, so it helps me not walking in a room and thinking why did i come in this room again <laughs> um, and literally cook that up then bring it over make it look pretty on a nice plate, it really makes a big difference for whether it's appealing because first of all, if it doesn't look appealing, you're not going to want to eat it and you want to going to eat something else. So it's got to look nice. And then what happens is, is by looking nice, you're starting the first process of breaking down them enzymes before it's even gone into your mouth. You start to produce saliva. And when you are excited about food, you'll get this moisture in your mouth, which you've got three salivary glands. You've got two here and one at the back here. And that's already gone up to the brain. The nervous system's gone up to the brain from the gut to go straight into parasympathetic nervous system, which means calm and restful. So it means that you've already switched into the motion of wanting to enjoy that food, which means you'll digest that food really, really well, and you won't get bloated afterwards. Trust me on this, okay? And take your time eating. Then when you have your first mouthful, ensure that you chew it. Hello, Natalie. Make sure you chew it. I don't want you sitting there and thinking, I need to chew for 20 times, 30 times, you know, because you've already switched off from food and you don't want to eat it. Just make sure you chew it down, okay? If you've got big, big basil leaves stuck in your mouth and you're getting them all in your teeth, then you know that you're not chewing it properly. Or if you're getting some heartburn or indigestion or you're feeling bloated, you haven't chewed it properly. Basil. Now, basil is one of the oldest herbs in mankind. Um, it's a miracle herb. It's so easy to grow as well. Um, it, it doesn't matter how much space you need to grow herbs. You can do it in your kitchen, on your kitchen window shelf, 
and you can grow it there. Just ensure that you water it continuously. And when I say water continuously, with the hot weather outside at the moment, my basil plants need to be watered at least twice a day. So morning and night, because they dry out really, really quickly. And literally the antioxidants that you have from that property of that plant can prevent from disease, illness, it can lower a, a child's fever if they've got a fever coming on you can actually chop up the basil leaves and you can actually put that in some hot water let it cool down obviously and then basically you don't have to eat the leaves the leaves will infuse into the water and that will actually bring the fever down and um, also basil leaves are great for people going through the menopause because if you're having a hot flush it will bring the flushes back down again so those those ladies that are getting up first in the morning and they're flushing hello net jenny flushing in the morning having some hot water with some basil leaves in there let it cool down or you can actually do it the night before and make sure the water is filtered or bottled water um i will talk about the reasons about water and why it needs to be filtered and so on at another session and then infuse it in your refrigerator then in the morning time, if you if you don't want to keep the leaves in, you can you can sift them out and then drink it and have a pint of that a day. It will really make a huge difference in your hot flushes. Um, and also the other thing is is having a sage uh, a supplement as well will also lower the body temperatures. Hi Pauline. So the other things that it can prevent from and um, is hay fever at the moment. Okay, so. Um, I, Phil, mistake me or wrong, you suffer with hay fever, is that correct? I know that my husband does. I, I remember you saying something about hay fever, but I know that Zoe can't, that can't be here this morning and, and a few other clients as well mentioned to me that pollen count is really high at the moment. So literally, basil can help prevent you from the sniffles. It can prevent you from headaches as well, nausea, insomnia. So again, if you have... A drink make sure you don't have it sh be just before bed because otherwise you'd be up through the night like I can be if I have a drink before bed and I have to wake up and I need to go to the toilet so if you give it 60 minutes before bedtime this will also help you go into a real nice deep sleep as well if you're unsure about quantities of using just let me know email me give me a call um, and I can send all of this over to you as a link um, the next food that I want to talk about, and this is really, really tasty, and it's great for kids as well, is strawberry. You'll probably think, oh, I'm never going to get spinach down them, but trust me, you, you will. Strawberry spinach salad with balsamic vinegar, or for people that are on anti-candida programs, which basically means they need to cut all yeast out of their diet, or olive oil. Phil, I think we're frozen. Oh, let me just do that. Sorry, guys. I think I'm back again. Did I lose you there? I think we're back again. Sorry about that. So, spinach is a great source of a plant-based iron. So, for guys that are depleted in iron, instead of having to take an iron supplement, which can constipate you, or you can take iron... Uh, iron supplements called fluoxacine which doesn't um, cause constipation and it can come in liquid form or tablet form um, you can get liquid form from your doctor but it's quite difficult to get hold of now because it's so expensive but you can get from myself you can get tablet form that we have that basically doesn't cause constipation but you can also add in that spinach as well the vit most again people don't realize that strawberries have vitamin c in them now you look at strawberry and you don't expect it to have vitamin C, it does, it has high levels of vitamin C. The strawberries help with the absorption of the spinach, which means then it breaks down the iron content, which is easy for your body to digest. It also supports the immune system and it's a great combo together and it tastes so great. Salmon, grilled salmon. So you can have it whether you want to do it on a griddle pan on top of your hob or you can do it in the oven you can poach it it it's up to preference choice it really is if you are if you are grilling make sure you don't overcook it because overcooked fish can put somebody off for life and um, a lot 
again people say well I don't really like fish because it, it tastes fishy if it's cooked correct and it's and it's pretty fresh it shouldn't taste fishy so cook it the way that you prefer trial and test it if you need to cut it into three portions and try three different options whether it's grilling going in the pan or going in the oven or poach then do some roasted kale now kale um, you just need to get a baking tray um, about so big and it goes like crispy seaweed and what you do is you, you can get bags of this you can get kale anywhere now many years ago you couldn't get kale everywhere it's, you know it's this food that most people like to put in lots of smoothies um, I'm not a big fan of it being in smoothies because um, kale should be chewed there's a reason why kale has stalks when you put it into a juice it can cause too much chlorophyll which can cause lots of gas and bloating and, and feeling unwell because your body hasn't been able to break it down efficiently so by chewing it it's the best source also I came across recently um, just before the, the, the corona um, came into the UK um, that you can actually get it frozen um, and I, I was it, it was like magic for me because it, it already got rid of all the stalks um, it was quite wet and moist as well and you can make pâtés out of them you can actually make burgers with some chilli, salt mix it all together into like a pâté um, add some egg, mix it together and then you can bung them in the oven or you can pan fry them as well um, and then some quinone quinone you can buy in packs so uh, microwave packs if you are not the greatest cook in the world or you can cook it out on the hob if you're cooking it out on the hob ensure that you cook it out for the enough time and you get rid of the starches afterwards because the starches leave sugars which again can cause bloating and also make you feel that you want to have crave sugar later on so remember we guard those starches then we cook it again and then put it back on the hob and then let it sit for a couple of minutes to keep cooking and um, this triggers the high vitamin d so remember grilled salmon roasted kale and quinine high vitamin c it triggers the body's immune cells and kills invading bacteria and viruses so if, if you've got somebody that's feeling unwell in your house, it's a great source of boosting foods to make them feel better again. We've got immune boosting turmeric and chicken wild rice soup as well. So turmeric is an antioxidant. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory. It's great for people, um, basically any inflammation in the body. So for instance, asthma. Um, hay fever because this is all an immune response where your body can't cope anymore so by taking turmeric into your diet, diet and supplementing on top you will feel better and that could be as quick as a week um, if you are going to have a turmeric um, supplement make sure it's a good source one um, the Lambert's one um, which you'll see on our website as well or you can go directly to the website but support local businesses um, is 20,000 milligrams so it's huge and that's in one tablet alone concentrated um, you'll hear of turmeric and black pepper and so on um, turmeric and black pepper is really good but I do find um, that it's better to do it separately and not everybody needs the turmeric and the black pepper together you normally find with turmeric and black pepper that, that one ingredient is a lot stronger than the other and it'll be the cheaper ingredient I'll let you have a look and have a think about it and, and read the backs of labels and um, a lot of uh, vitamins do have bulking agents and stuff and that they shouldn't have in so when you read the front of it you, you might be fooled in thinking that this supplement is amazing and then you look at the back and you're like wow why has it got that in and if it's got something in that you don't understand question it speak to them hi Kelsey and share tea as well um, so going back to the soup because I'm going up a little bit tangent because I get a little bit passionate about what I do um, basically while you're making the soup you are basically blitzing down the chicken you can either get that from your butchers or get that locally delivered from your local farm like we've been doing um, you can get them to blitz it before it comes to you or you can literally take it off the bone or you can do it in the slow cooker, so it's been used with the bone juices, so you're getting bone broth with that as well. Take it out of the slow cooker and literally 
discard the bones obviously use the broth of that or if you want to use a stock coop with you can do make sure that it is gluten free and there's no other bits and pieces nasty nasty things in there and you can blitz that with the blitz chicken that you want and add it together and then you get some wild rice and um, again you can get the microwave uh, pouches they're really easy bring it in the microwave for two minutes take it out mix it all together put it on top of the hob options are whether you like it smooth or you like it chunky it's a real option and um, i like both it depends on what mood i'm in so this time of year um i like it smooth in the winter months i like it quite chunky so you choose that and also any leftovers or if you make a big batch of it freeze it there's nothing stopping you with any of these foods apart from the strawberries that i've mentioned that you can make bulk cooking and then you can put it in the freezer um, and that again will help you on the days where it's not really going to cordon pan because you've got little ones all over the place or you're busy with your work because you're a key worker or when we get through the other side that you've got these meals already set for you so you're not going back to your old routines that you were doing before because lots of us now are setting really good habits for ourselves um, a lot of people are, you know with well, emotions are all over the place but overall the people that I'm speaking to are really 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 positive so they've brought back habits that they've not done for many many years so let's not not let's not lose those when when we do go back to work and we get back into society again let's hold on to these values and these beliefs that we have to be as a family or if you're on your own the things that you're enjoying doing and um, and also the, the soup will improve brain function and lower heart disease. Now, this one is for Caroline. Um, so basically she wanted me to ask her basically one that is a real booster food for vegans. So this is coconut um, vegetables. You choose the vegetables that you want to put in there um, and literally lots and lots of herbs and spices. So this contains garlic, which is again for your immune system, your heart, ginger. Um, you can either cook that up in a pan or you can chop it up raw. I quite like it raw because it really gives some heat and energy in it. And this boosts the immune system as well. Also some chili. Chili um, is high in vitamin C and it boosts the immune system. So we put the spinach in there, the iron, the turmeric, and this adds antibacterial. Blitz it all together, just as I said before, you can do this in your blend or your, um, basically your, um, oh, my brain's gone dead now. Uh, what are the blitzes called? I forgot what they're called. Bullet, Nutribullet, thank you Bing. <laughs> It's because I don't use a Nutribullet, that's the reasons why, because I've got my own, own mixer. Um, a Nutribullet, which I know a lot of you have, and blitz it all together, and again, you can, you can freeze it, and then you can eat it straight away. Now, I just want to quickly go, because I've got so many other things that I want to go through, and I know people have got, hello Kevin, I know a lot of people are on time restraints, so um, I want to talk about children. So, children, foods, so walnuts they're ugly they look like brains but you can have fun with them get the kids to mess around with them they're great snacks throughout the day it'll stop them from eating chocolate and crisps and craving for the, the cupboard get them break breaking them up in their hands get them tasting them um, and these are great sources of vitamins and also helps their body protect their dna of all things um, so literally by having them throughout the day you can saute them as well so you can get them in the pan with the kids make sure that they get a little chef hat on and the little aprons and stuff and get the little wooden spoon or your wooden spoon get a little pan and put some um rapeseed oil in there and saute them and you can add some spices in them now i've got a real variety of choice in my house so whether they like hot like biana does now but she only likes really mild. So what I'll do with hers is I'll do it with some Himalayan salt. So this also gets magnesium into their body as well, which is really important as for their bodies if they they are getting a little bit of stress and tension because they're not getting out and about or they're not seeing their friends and so on. 
It will also help promote the sleep, but also basically make sure their behavior is better as well. So I know all of you will like that one, especially if you've got more than one child in your house. Um, so basically get that in the pan, mix it together, and then you can put that in a Tupperware container and then they can help themselves to it. Um, the other thing is poached and scrambled eggs are superfoods and they're great forms of protein. So you can literally just do some scrambled egg with them, um, mash that up for them, have that in a muffin. So they can have that in a, in a muffin with some blueberries and so on. You can have that for breakfast or lunch. You can have an omelet. So get them cracking the, cracking the eggs, add other ingredients in there. So if you're struggling to get greens down them, which greens are important. So in our house, we call them um, broccoli trees. Trees are, are amazing. Um, so you can chop them up really smallly, or as I said mentioned earlier, is the kale, the frozen kale. So you only need a little bit in there to discard it and hide it. Cut it up small so they can't see it, okay? And then put it in there, get them to put it in the pan, get them cracking, moving it all in, and then if they, if they don't want to eat a whole portion, cut it into little portions, and then you have the other portion. This is great for light lunch as well. And then you can have some mixed salad, make a face on the plate i know it sounds really stupid but making it fun makes them want to eat it um with the trees with broccoli you can make um cheese broccoli bites as well and you can do this with um peppers as well so these are boosts of c a and e um, it's a real powerhouse for the immune system so you simply steam up the broccoli mash it down you can do this with the peppers as well. So basically you can either charcoal them, so you can do them underneath the oven with a little bit of oil and then strip the skins off and then mash it down. You don't steam them, okay? Um, and then blend it up in the food processor. Um, and then you get the kids to scoop it up into little balls. Um, if you wanna put cheese in there, you can do. You don't need to if you don't want to. Um, and literally scoop it all up in balls and you then can cook some now whether you shallow fry it, when I say shallow fry, you literally put it in a in a, a in a pan and then just put a little of olive oil and scoop them round, or you can then freeze them and then you've got them at a later stage. And that is basically great for people, um, for adults and children, vitamin C, B6 and vitamin E. Now, just a quick one. Has anybody got any questions that they want to ask me at all? or any of the sessions that they want me to discuss um, on a further note. So any ideas, uh, subjects, there's so much that I can talk about, but if, they, if you have got any ideas or suggestions and you want me to really go into deep into them or you just want me to briefly go over them, please fire them away. Either put them through the Facebook or Instagram or email or call me directly or text as well. We do have a WhatsApp group um, which is um, on 07815835449, or you can do it through info at Also, give me some guidance and advice as well. This is only my third ever um, live uh, Facebook. Um, so any feedback, positive or negative, constructively, of course, would be really, really appreciated. Um, and I enjoy to see you guys next week on Monday at 10 a.m. If 10 a.m. is not great, please let me know times that are more suitable for you guys. Thank you. Was it alright?